All right, everybody, we finally re reached the last chapter, chapter six. Chapter six is going to, our main goal for chapter six is going to be solving trigonometric equations. Okay? And in order to solve a trigonometric equation, you have to understand we're going to be going backwards to what we've been doing. So let's review for a minute. From chapter one, the beginning of the course, we have learned the definition of sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine is y over r, cosine is x over r, tangent is y over x. We also know in words, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. And we've learned trig is a relationship between the acute angle in the right triangle and the two sides. And we know to look up the sine of 90, the sine of 2 pi, the sine of 51 degrees, we could either A, use our references, our unit circle, and our triangles, or B, just type it into our calculator. Okay? I know we do not need our calculator for sine of 90. We know the sine of 90 is off the unit circle. So if I draw here my buddy the unit circle, who we love so dearly, our coordinates are 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Yes, on your final exam, one of the first things I'm going to tell you to do on the packet I'm going to give you is I'm going to tell you, write down your unit circle. You've got to know it. To look up the sine of 90, I go to 90 degrees. I use this coordinate. Sine is the y value. Sine is 1. Okay? If I want to look up the cosine of 2 pi, I know 2 pi is in radians. I know I can change that to degrees. We know pi is 180 degrees. 2 times 180 is really looking up. The cosine of 360 degrees. Again, that's easy. That's off the unit circle. 0, 90, 180, 270. This is 360. Cosine is the x value. The x value is 1. Now, if I want to look at the tangent of 51 degrees, can I use my unit circle? No. Can I use my special right triangles? No. So the only way you guys know how to look up the tangent of 51 degrees is go to your calculator. So everybody, let's walk to the screen to use our calculator. If I'm going to look up the tangent of 51 degrees in my calculator, what mode do I have to be in? That is right. I have to be into degree mode. So I'm checking. I'm in degree mode on my 30x2s. I'm in degree mode on my pro. To type the tangent of 51 degrees, I type what I read. I type tan, and I put behind it 51. I don't need the degree symbol. I'm in degree mode. And it spits out that lovely decimal. And I do the same thing in the pro. I type tangent, put 51 degrees, and it spits out that same decimal. All right, let's go back up to the board. So. I know the tangent of 51 degrees is the irrational number 1n, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 7, 1, 5, 7, dot, dot, dot. Now, here's the moral of the story. We need to understand when we evaluate a trig function, I am giving you the angle and you are spitting me back at a number. And that's what we've been doing all semester. When we do Sokotoa, Law of sines, law of cosines. I'm giving you the angles. You're spitting me out the number value. In this section, we have to learn to go backwards. And going backwards is doing an inverse. Now, you've heard the word inverse before. It's back in good old arithmetic. Every number in math has an additive inverse. Every number in math has a multiplicative inverse, except for zero. So let's think, if I asked you what is the additive inverse of 3, you would say negative 3. Because 3 plus a negative 3 would cancel out each other, they undo each other, and get us back to 0. We know the opposite of add 3 is subtract 3. That's why those operations are inverse. That's why a positive number and a negative number, when you add it, make 0. They're additive inverses. What is the multiplicative inverse? of 3. Well, multiplicative implies multiply, and the operation that's opposite of multiply is divide. So that's why we say the multiplicative inverse of 3 is 1 over 3, or 1 third. 
which I know in fifth grade we call the reciprocal. And I know when we take three and multiply it by one third, the threes cancel out and we're left with one. That's showing you again that multiply and divide are inverses. They undo each other. We know if I square a number, the opposite, the inverse of that is square root. So that's what we're talking about here, going backwards, doing the opposite. So if a trig expression means I give you the angle, you spit me out the number value, then in this chapter we're going backwards. I'm going to give you the number, and you're going to give me out the angle. Now we have some problems with that. The first problem is directions, because an angle could either be written in degrees or radians. So you have to read your directions. If they give you a number and they want the angle in degrees and you give it in radians, you're going to get marked wrong. Okay? One way to do the inverses, obviously, is using your calculator. And believe it or not, we've already done this. When we were solving triangles and finding the missing angle, we were doing inverse. If you remember, the button to find an angle is not sine, it's the sine with a negative 1, the sine inverse button. To find a missing angle, you don't do cosine, you do cosine inverse. To find a missing angle, you don't do tangent, you do tangent inverse. So that's what this section 6-1 is all about. Going backwards, understanding the concept. In trig, if I give you the number, then I want the angle out. That's the inverse. And if I want that angle out, you better read your directions. So now in your notes, it says for A, B, and C here for choice examples, it says find theta in DD form. What does DD mean? That means decimal degrees. If you look, look at my notation. Theta equals, so we know theta represents an angle. That's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the angle. I'm giving you the trig function, cosine, sine, cosecant. But I'm not giving the original functions. The negative one, remember, means inverse. The word arc means inverse. So this is telling you behind these trig functions, these are not angle measurements. These are the numbers. So when I use this notation, the negative one exponent, or I use the word arc, I'm saying, hey, people, behind these trig words are the numbers, and I want you to go backwards and give me the angle. Now, if you look at these numbers, are any of those numbers, these decimals, on our unit circle or on our right triangles? Heck no. Our unit circles have ones and zeros and negative ones. Our right triangles have twos, ones, square root of three, square root of two. So the only way we're going to get the angle out of here with these crazy numbers is to use our calculators. So let's go sit down and try that. So get your calculators and follow along with me. Okay. So let's look at the first expression. I want to do the cosine inverse of that ugly decimal. You type exactly what you read. Now, make sure you're in what mode? Degrees. So I am in degree. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit cosine inverse on the 30x2s. To remember to get cosine inverse, you hit second cos. That puts the inverse button on there. That's telling the calculator, yo calculator, we're doing the opposite. I'm going to give you a number, you're going to spit me out an angle. And I'm going to type that decimal, negative, the baby negative, decimal point, 1334-8816, and close. And I hit equals, and there it is in decimal degrees, and in our notes it says around to the nearest tenth, so that would be 97.7 degrees. On the pro... Again, to do cosine inverse, I double click on cosine. So I click once, it's cosine, I click twice, it becomes the inverse. I type in that decimal, my negative decimal point, 1334881616, and I close it, and I still get the same thing. Everybody's good? All right. In example B, instead of using the negative one, they're using the word arc. Just recall, that's old school. Arc means to do sine inverse. Okay, you can do that one on your own. Let's go to C. Now, the problem with C is we're doing the cosecant inverse. On either one of these calculators, do I have a button for cosecant? No, I do not. So if I can't do cosecant, I, can't have a, I don't have a button for cosecant inverse. So if you remember, this is going back to our study of triangles. Okay, this is section 2.3. We've already done this. 
we know that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So what we have to do on our calculator, because we don't have a cosecant button, we have to use the sine button. So we hit sine inverse. We put in that decimal, which is 1.942283. But here's the important thing. That decimal, 1.942283, has to do with cosecant. So that's not the decimal for sine. Right now, if you hit enter, the calculator won't give you an angle, and you should realize that. Sine, we all know from the graphing chapter, can only go as high as 1 and as low as negative 1. So we can't have a sine value that's 1.9. It's too big. So what you got to remember is when you're doing a reciprocal, once you put the decimal in, you got to hit your reciprocal button. On the 30x2s, the reciprocal button is this also this negative 1. That tells the calculator, take this decimal, flip it, and then do the sine. And what that's really going to do is give you the angle that you need for cosecant. And there's your angle, 30.9879607 degrees. Okay? On the pro, let's do it with that. So on the pro, again, we do not have a cosecant button, so we're going to use the reciprocal, which is sine. Because we're doing it inverse, we double-click that. We put sine inverse. We put our decimal. But that would be the decimal for cosecant. It's not the decimal for sine, so we have to flip it. On the pro, to flip it, you have to go to your little X with the box, and then you have to type baby negative 1. You have to actually type it in. Close it, and there's your same angle. Okay? Coming up to the board. So again, we know we can use our calculator to find an angle measurement. If we want it in decimal degrees, we have to be in what mode? Degree mode. Okay, let's go one more time. Here's our next example. Now, look at the notation of your book. This is not me, this is your author of your book. When your author wants you to find an angle in degrees, they use the symbol theta to represent the angle. Over here it says find y as a real number. That means they don't want the angle as degrees. A real number means they want the angle in radians. And the problem with this is you think because they want the angle in radians, you've got to have a pi symbol. No. Radians just means the angle is a number measurement. Okay? It doesn't have to have a pi in it to be radians. So the author of your book uses the letter Y to represent the angle when it wants it in radians as a real number. If you look here, look at my notation. Arc means inverse. If this is an inverse, it means this is a number I want out an angle. Secant inverse. I'm giving you a number I want at an angle. Both of these numbers, if we look at those decimals, are not on our unit circle or on our right triangles, so we have no choice. We got to use our cal we have to use our calculator to find the angle measurements. We can't look them up on our own. Make sense? All right, let's go sit back at our calculator. All right. So now, for example, too, if we want to find both of these angles as real numbers, that means radian, which means before we ever use our calculator, what mode do we need to be in? That's right, radians. So let's fix it. On the TI-30, we go to here, DRG. We arrow over to radians, and we hit enter. Now I got my RID, I'm in radians. On the pro, we go to mode, we arrow over to radians, we hit enter. And to get out of the screen, we hit second, quit. Okay? My RID is on the screen. I'm in radians. So now my calculator is ready to give me an angle in radians. To do arc tan, arc is the old-fashioned way to do an inverse. So on the pro, I'll hit tan twice to put the inverse up. I'll type in that lovely long decimal number they gave us, that repeating decimal. I'll hit equals. That is my angle in radians. I know it looks ugly. It's a number. It's a decimal. And then on the homework, it says round to the nearest ten thousandth. Tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths. That nine is going to round up to a ten. So I'll put down my zero. I'll count me my one. That seven will become an eight. So this will become eight thousand three hundred eighty ten thousandths. On the 30xx, same thing. I'm going to do tangent inverse. I hit second tan. 
I type in that decimal, I, as many ones as I need, it's repeating. And here's my angle in radians, the same exact decimal number. Everybody's good? All right, let's do one more with the calculator. Now, do we, we want to do now a secant inverse. Do we have a secant button on our calculator? No. So what do we got to use in place of secant? It's reciprocal cosine. So we're going to put our cosine inverse button up. We're going to type that decimal. But remember, we're using cosine, and that decimal belongs to secant. So we have to do the reciprocal of this. So I'll hit my reciprocal, put my little negative 1, close this, and here comes your angle in radians. It's a number measurement, 2.46052209. And then I'd round it to the nearest 10,000. 1, 2, 3, 4, the 5 would stay a 5. So 2 and 4,605 10 thousandths radians. Okay, I'm going back to the board. So I've just reviewed with you how to use your calculator to find a missing angle, okay, which is really doing an inverse, the opposite of what we're used to doing. And that's the big key. I'm trying to make sure you understand what the word inverse means. We're doing the opposite of what we normally do. When we evaluate a trig function, I usually give you the angle, you get me the number. When we evaluate a trig inverse, I'm giving you the number, you're getting me an angle. Okay, but here's the dilemma, and this is what I want you to think about. From the beginning of the semester, we've always said the word, all students take calculus. And what is that a reference to? That's a reference to tell us what quadrant the angle would be in. We know that all trig functions are positive in quadrant one, Sine is positive in quadrant two, tangent's positive in quadrant three, cosine's positive in quadrant four. So we've seen through the development of this course that for every trig function, there's two quadrants where the number's positive, there's two quadrants where the number's negative. So listen to my question. Everybody look up here at this example. Arc sine, this is the number I'm giving you, right? Because I'm doing an inverse. I'm giving you a number, I want an angle. That number is what, y'all? It's positive. Well, I believe sine is positive in both quadrants one and two. Yet, when you type this into the calculator and get an answer, the calculator is only prepared to give you one answer. And the only answer you get here is I think it's roughly 52 degrees. So guys, here's my question. How does the calculator decide for every single one of these decimal numbers, which quadrant to give you the angle in? Does it go eeny, meeny, miny, mo? For example, this is a negative. Well, cosine is negative in quadrants two and four. If you go back to your notes and look at the answer for this angle, was it in two or was it in four? I believe it was in two. Why are they giving us the angle in quadrant two and not four? That's what we need to understand. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next lesson. It's great to know how to use your calculator, but I need you to understand why the calculator's choosing the angle it's giving you out when you do an inverse. Why is the calculator giving you a certain angle measurement? So we're going to talk about that in the next video. See you then.